Marion, and I have worked in the radiology field for a little over 10 years. So I specialize in different modalities. I, I love radiology. It's what I like to do. So when I got into MRI, well, first I got into CT, but if you are watching this video and you don't know about radiology, so first I had my x-ray license because at the time I graduated from x-ray school in 2014. At the time, I didn't know of any MRI programs where you can just do MRI without an x-ray license. Um, from all I've known, you had to do x-ray first and then you can do MRI. But now there are programs where you don't have to be an x-ray tech. You can just go through and do MRI. But for me, I have my license to ART to do um, x-rays and um, CTs and MRIs and breast exams and breast ultrasounds. So I got into MRI because first I did CT scans. And with CT scans and MRI scans, the machine looked very similar. The patient still go in the tube. Um, the difference between the two is one of them uses radiation or ionizing radiation. The other one doesn't. It determines how long the scan is. What I didn't know was, so whenever I did my MRI program, I did it online. And then my school had me um, do clinicals in the area that I lived in, which was so convenient. I loved it that way. So whenever I was doing my school or doing my clinical, I didn't, or actually during my school too, I didn't know that I would be the only tech on the shift whenever I work in MRI because coming from CT or the CT department, if you're coming from a hospital setting, you're going to have about three to five CT techs working with you because CT is very fast paced. You have to do a lot of scans, especially if you're working in the ER. There are scans being ordered. There are patients coming in. So I didn't know that I was have to, I would have to work by myself. If I did know, I would have paid more attention to learning the physics of the machine, learning how to position for this patient. And I'll tell you why I didn't learn it in just a second. I would have learned um, to do things this way or to research things this way. So the reason why I didn't know how to do all these things, because the people, some people that was training me, that was great. Hands off to them. Some people that was training me didn't know MRI. They was cross-trained themselves. So they couldn't teach me the physics behind the machine. They couldn't teach me how to work different areas within MRI, like how to click on this button to change these settings, why you're changing this versus why you're not changing it. No one could tell me because they was cross-trained and no one told them. So whenever I'm going to work in the real world, now I don't know how to alter the machine or go in the back, you know, to change these settings or to add these type of protocols because you also depend on where you work at, you have to build protocols. Meaning if a doctor say, hey, I want this brain scan done, but can you add in this type of of scan or sequence, meaning picture, can you make it look this way versus that way? Can you give it more detail versus less detail? So um, I wish I would have known how to do that when I was a student. And another thing is, yeah, the teacher, she was great or he was great. Whatever teacher I had or you have, they're all great. But you also have PowerPoints that is given to you, you know, online. And I wouldn't change it for the word. I love the online setting. If I had to do it again, I will. Because it could be the same thing in the classroom. You're getting PowerPoints, but you're still not understanding the information. So it could be the same both ways. So whenever you're doing it, you know, online or with the teacher, they can break it down for you or they probably can't. It depends on what teacher you have, what material they're giving you. So no one knew why you're changing or no one knew to tell me to change this bandwidth or why I'm changing this bandwidth, why you don't change the TE, why you need to change the TR, why does it, why can't they go above this range or why does it have to stay below this range? No one was telling me this. So whenever I was scanning on my own, I wasn't changing it. I was leaving it the same because I didn't have anyone telling me this is why you should change it. Another thing is in clinical, you know, 
there were scans coming in that I wasn't doing or I wasn't, you know, I couldn't do because they was like, oh, it's an abdomen scan. These going to take long. So let me just do it. And you just sit here and watch. So for about, I don't know, five, six months, I'm not doing abdomen scans because you have to also work with a tech. I'm a tech myself so I can say this. You also have to work with a tech that is comfortable with letting you scan. When I have students, if the student want to scan, I let them scan. I don't tell them, no, this is hard. Don't scan. Or I don't tell them, no, this um, this is a very particular protocol to be scanning. Don't do it. I'll do it. If they're comfortable with scanning, I let them scan. Even if they don't say, hey, can I scan? I ask them, hey, do you want to try this or you want to just watch? For me, especially with abdomen scans, it was kind of like, oh, this is hard. The breath hold is going to be hard. The machine is going to be tricky. I understand that. Yes, for the first one or two times or maybe three or four times, I can watch. But if I'm coming to you and I'm saying I want to scan I need this for my clinical hours, for my clinical numbers. Why not let me scan? So when I got out of clinical, I wasn't comfortable with scanning abdomens, you know. And then another thing, implants. Depending on what where you train at or where you work at, you may have a facility where they're coming in and they have nothing but implants. The facility I was training at, I don't remember seeing a lot of implants especially pacemakers and stimulators. From all I knew, when I was a student, you can scan pacemakers at all. And then whenever I get out of school and start working at a clinic, then they're scanning pacemakers all the time. You even have someone setting and programming pacemakers on, on them, you know, themselves or by themselves. So I'm like, wow, this is new. I don't feel comfortable with doing it because I never was trained or taught to do it. All I know is in my MRI book and from what my teacher said, don't scan pacemakers. So you can scan pacemakers if um if it's MRI conditional and if it has been if you researched it and you checked it with the company that did the pacemaker for the patient or made the pacemaker and they say yes they can get scanned, you have to meet certain conditions. Meaning you can't just throw the patient in and scan them. Someone has to come out from a pacemaker company or a representative and program the pacemaker in the correct setting. So you also have to make sure you look at the printout that they give you to make sure that they programmed it. And then now in 2024 or whenever it started, because this video is, is in 2025, you have more and more facilities that is letting you or letting the technologist train and set pacemakers without a company coming in. So that's another thing you have to look out for, that your facility may one day get you to set your own pacemakers remotely. And then with the implants, no one told me how to research implants. So when I'm a student, I'm just sitting in the background looking at the scans being done. I'm not um, I don't know how to research implants. I don't know how to make sure they're safe or not. So whenever I get out of school I'm lost. I don't feel comfortable. I don't know how to do this. So now I'm researching um, stimulators. If I don't know, I call the company and they can email you the patient's handout. Always have the patient show you a card because a patient may think or may say that it's okay and it may not be or they may not even know what's in their body. Always change your patients. You have some people who's going to say, oh, they're fine. We're just scanning their head. Their jeans are fine. We're just scanning their foot. Their bra is fine. No, it's not fine. Something can happen where they forget a cigarette lighter, a knife, anything in their pocket, and it can fly up and it can hit them or whatever. You know, whenever I was trained, I wasn't trained as a student to use the metal detector. So there was an incident that happened. No one got hurt, but as a student, and then this falls on the tech because you're supposed to be training me. So as a student, I bring a patient in the room and, you know, no metal detector they're using. So I'm telling the patient, make sure that you change and empty out your pockets. And they say they did, you know, so I'm bringing them in the room and I find out that they have a knife in their pocket. So these are things that no one tells you. Or they forget to tell you, then whenever you get out in the real world on, by yourself, 
Now, injuries are happening, accidents are happening that you have to be mindful of and you have to watch out for. And then another thing is, I don't, and this is um, this is tough to say, but if I'm doing a scan, I'm researching the information. You don't want to get caught when someone telling you, hey, this scan is done, this scan is good to go, scan them. No, you don't scan them. What you do is, especially if you work in a hospital setting, because this is done a lot in a hospital setting. I worked in a clinic as well. I've worked in both atmospheres and environments. So I know how both is done because I worked at different hospitals and I worked at different clinics because I'm a travel tech. I know at a hospital, we get in the habit of looking at chest x-rays, um, CT head scans, abdomen scans, x-ray pelvis scans, and we make sure there's no stimulator in there because you may have someone that fills out the MRI screen form or questionnaire that forgets something, even hearing aids. No one about to tell me um, hearing aids are clear now, so make sure that you're checking because they they have clear hearing aids now. It's not it's no longer brown or black or whatever color. It's different colors. So even AirPods, make sure that they pull their hair back and you look at their ear to make sure they have AirPods. They don't have AirPods. Another thing is when patients are diabetic, no one when I was training told me. A patient is diabetic, they may have a monitor on their arm or their stomach that has a metal piece in it that is operated by a battery that can burn a patient. No one told me that. So when I went to a clinic and learned how they do things, then I found out that those glucose monitors are not safe. So that's why I'm saying it's good to train with different techs. It's good to float and travel to different facilities because you know different ways things can be be done. So that's what I've learned when um with MRI that no one told me. So now I'm telling you so you don't make any mistakes. Any accidents does not occur. Even those leads, whenever um patients come in, let's say through the emergency room and they have those little white small stickers on them, even those cannot be scanned because it has like a metal piece that can heat up and burn a patient, even uh, medication patches. I don't care if the medica- medication patch is clear, you know, like the back part of it is clear. They're taking it off. I don't have time to research if this is MRI safe or not. So get it to come off. That's another thing. Um, you just have to work with somebody that is willing to train you because I've had someone who trained me how to do a foot the completely wrong way. So whenever I get on my own, now I'm confused on how to do a foot. I know how to do one now, but that's what I'm saying. Someone have to really be able to train you and show you MRI. Or when you get out on your own, you're going to be lost. You're not going to know what to do. You're not going to know how to fix it. You're going to get behind on your schedule. It's going to frustrate you. You're going to hate MRI. So I would say, as a student, if you're a student watching this or a new tech, learn as much as you can. Ask as many questions because depending on what facility you work at, you may not have anyone working with you. I like to work by myself, you know. And then there also is a website where if you don't know how to do a certain scan, um, you can do it or whatever. It can show you how to do it. And that's another thing. If you're taught to do a scan one way, you're not going to be able to do it another way whenever you have to deviate from it. When I was a student, I was only taught to use the head core whenever you're doing a brain scan. And then when I went to another facility, I was by myself and the patient, different reasons why you have to deviate from something and use a different type of core. And no one told me that whenever I was in um, MRI school. So these are things I'm telling you because I do not want you to get stuck like me. You can reach out to people because I've done it for a while. There was um, this one person that I texted her and she got back to me real quick. Um, so, But what if you're reaching out to someone and they can't text you right away or they can't answer your phone calls right away? That's why these are things that you have to learn in MRI. You have to learn it because... You're going to be by yourself and no one is going to be able to help you. So if I hope I answered all your questions, 
This is just something I wish I would have known. Um, another thing is the call. I did not know you had to take call in MRI. I didn't know it was a thing. So after I'm in the program and pretty much almost done with clinical, people is telling me, oh, you know, you're going to have to take call. Oh, um, I didn't know that I I can't take call, you know, so that's another thing. So you're getting an MRI. If you're working at a hospital, they will want you to take call or you may have to take call. But if you're working at a clinic, you don't have to take call. So that's another thing you have to see if you want to work at a clinic versus a hospital, which one works best for you and your schedule. So I hope I answered your questions in this video. If I didn't, uh, feel free to leave questions in the comments section. If you're scanning, another thing, if you're scanning and you notice that you're losing signal and the pictures aren't coming out as clear, maybe you don't have your coil on. So make sure that your coil is selected to be on. All right. I hope you all enjoyed this video. I will see you all in the next one. Make sure that you are subscribed to my channel. Give the video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Bye.